Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Hey everybody. It's Brock. This is Brock. And we got a new episode with another episode of All About. Of All About. All About. What's up everybody? It's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About today. Today we are learning all about the purple striped dotty bag. Let's get right into it. This guy is really easy to take care of and he's good in pretty much any tank you can offer. Prices on them, you'll spend about $10 to $15. Tank size, just a 30 gallon. He can be a little tank. Care level, he's super easy to take care of. Temper, he can be semi-aggressive. He tends to find a cave in the tank and it basically becomes his home and his territory and he will fight for it against other fish to get near it. He will beat up on fish three times the size, it does not matter. We've seen big triggers swimming by and that dude will bulk up at them and try to get them. This dude is just not going to let them touch his stuff. Reef compatible, definitely he's a beautiful reef fish. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. DKH, 8 to 12. And your salinity, 1.020 to 1.025. Diet, they are carnivore. They'll pretty much eat anything. A lot of times they will not come out to get the food though because they're so shy down in their cave. So make sure you're getting some food down there to them, whether it's keeping on feeding where your other fish stop eating it or getting some pellets to drop down that'll fall down to them. Max size 3 inches, nothing too big, a nice little pseudochromus. Compatibility, just ask if it was for me, I would recommend only getting one pseudochromus or dotty bag, so make sure to look and research to see which one you really want to get in your tank, unless you just have a really big tank and you can put one on one side and one on the other side. Color, nice bright purple and yellow, it looks beautiful in a reef tank. Origin, they do come from Indo-Pacific. So another thing with these guys, they do love to jump, especially whenever they're first introduced into a tank. So make sure you have some very good glass lids and plastic over that tank or nets, however you do it. Just make sure you don't leave them a spot to hop out of. Like I said, he does tend to stay in his own little territory once he gets into a tank. They also have been known to eat bristle worms, so if you don't want to get like a six line or get a coral banded, you could try this guy for eating those. Another thing is we got him one last week, and it took him one whole week before he came out. The dude was just gone, disappeared. We didn't know where he was, but he was just buried up, and I guess he only came out at night, and a week later, there he was coming out to eat, so... If he does do this in your tank, make sure you're not getting in there, picking up rocks, trying to look for them. That is just going to scare him more and put him on the verge of jumping out or just stressing him out too much. So don't be messing around in there. Just be patient, keep feeding, and he'll come out and eat. But that's a simple fish, a good beginner fish because he is so hardy. But he does get pretty aggressive, so think about that whenever you put him in a small tank. If you put him in a small tank and he takes over his cave in the tank, I mean, it's going to be hard to put other fish around him. So, it's a real easy guy, super cheap too, and you get some really pretty colors in your tank. Hope you all have a good day. Make sure to like and subscribe, and also check out my other videos. We got plenty of them out there. I'm just trying to push them out so we can start doing some coral. I'll see y'all later.